Okay, time for our next video on various chemical weapons and how to protect yourself from them. And we're near the end of this series now, there's only a couple of things left to do in it. However, today we're going to talk about blood agents. Now, blood agents, um, it's kind of a bit of a deceptive name. They're called blood agents because they kill you from getting into your bloodstream after being inhaled. And once in your bloodstream, they can cause all sorts of damage. Now, most blood agents are actually cyanide and arsenic based vapours, or gas. So I think for the sake of this video, it would be easier just to refer them to, as it as, you know, cyanide gas and arsenic gas or whatever else now. Now, depending on what list of blood agents I look at, there are various things that uh, come up that may or may not be blood agents, depending on what your criteria is for them. So bear that in mind. However, um... For the sake of this video, um, I'm going to include phosgene in it again. I've talked about phosgene in the previous video. I did a video entirely on phosgene. But according to some lists, phosgene is a blood agent. In others, it's a choking agent. Some say it's both. But primarily for this video, what I want to look at is cyanide gas um, in various forms. So, cyanide gas and some of the other blood agents... Uh, they have to be in very high vapour concentration, from what I understand from reading, to affect your skin. So, if you're, you know, not got any NBC gear on, you're just dressed like this. In theory, as long as the gas build-up isn't too high, you should be alright with only a respirator on itself. And, again, another confusing thing. Uh, from the lists I've looked, cyanide, gas, and things like that are both classed, classed or hydrogen cyanide is both classed as an organic vapour or an inorganic vapour, so I'd say you'd need at least an AB filter. Um, you know, obviously a full NBC CBRN filter would definitely include A and B protection, normally ABE or ABEC. So, um, you know, when it comes to those regards, you're completely covered on that front. So, cyanide gas and those sort of things, hydrogen cyanide, are generally only really dangerous if you're in, in, a, in an enclosed space, or lots and lots of it is used. Uh, for example, um, cyanide, hydrogen cyanide was the main sort of chemical used um, in US execution chambers when they had the US gas chambers, where this was not like a genocide thing, this was, uh, you know, if you were um, convic a convicted criminal, Sentence to death, some states used to do it with a gas chamber where you were put in like a bulkhead door in a little pressurised room. They'd strap you down, they'd release hydrogen cyanide, um, which you'd inhale, causing muscle contractions and death. Um, but yeah, it was also used in the Holocaust by the Nazis um, in the extermination camps. Basically, uh, Zyklon B, from what I understand, is a hydrogen cyanide when you throw the granules down. It then turns, uh, reacts to the air and turns into cyanide gas. So, basically, cyanide, um, as said, and some of the other blood agents, are much more dangerous. I mean, phosgene, if you're going to include that, then that's the exception to the rule, I'd say. But lots of them seem to be, they have to be in very high concentrations to be dangerous outdoors in well-ventilated areas. But in ventilated areas, they are very deadly, as in you don't need to inhale much to die very quickly from them. So, in that regard, um, you know... Cyanide gas is very dangerous if you're in a building and some leaks because you have very little time to get your mask on. But as I said, the good news seems to be that you only, from most sources I've read, need to get a mask on. You don't need to bother with full NBC gear unless the concentration is really, really high. Where the amount you take through your pores could then, you know, have the same poison effects on you. So, as I said, what you really need if there's cyanide gas escapes is to have a respirator with um, a working filter. Um, so I'd say an A and B filter, so Alpha Bravo, the AB from the ABEC kind of thing. That's all you really need for cyanide gas or the full NBC or CBRN filter that's in date. Um, because cyanides and hydrogen cyanide and some of the other blood agents seem to either be all classes organic or inorganic vapours. So, for the most part, it's very easy. You get your respirator on as fast as possible with your filter, and you're protected, and obviously evacuate the area. Uh, but as said, they are very dangerous in enclosed spaces. From what I could read, there's not much of a taste or smell to them, at least if you taste or smell them, it's probably too late for you. I've always heard the thing with, I think it's either arsenic or cyanide, that it tastes like bitter almonds, but obviously, maybe by the time you taste that, you're in a bit of trouble. 
So yeah, to sum up Blood Agents, um, obviously, if you somehow find out there's some around, get your respirator on as soon as possible with your filter and evacuate the area. Um, it's very unlikely you'll be exposed to hydrogen cyanide as a weapon of war. However, there are chances that when things like tear gas burns, it makes um, cyanide gas. So obviously, there's lots of things you have to be careful of in that regard, where other things can accidentally make poison or blood agents uh, that way. So there you go. Uh, one of the less threatening things, unless you're in a very high, con high concentration indoor area with it. But for the most part, get your respirator on with your filter and evacuate the area and you should be fine, provided you know it's coming.